danger, excitement, adventure. Boston Blackie. Enemy of those who make him an enemy. Friend of those who have no friends. Yes, sir. That's Boston Blackie, and he's quite a guy. Hi, Blackie. Hi, Jim. I'm certainly glad you came down. Oh, you remember Mary, don't you? Oh, of course. Excuse me, Mary. Good to see you. Uh, I'm just so fouled up on my first case. Oh, Counselor, you remember Whitey. Hi, Whitey. How are you? Like I told you, Blackie, when I phoned, I've already landed my first client. A real, live, human-type client. What kind of a rap are you trying to be? A uh, hit and run. My client killed a milkman out near Encino. My client happens to work in a department store, a window dresser. He's all right, Black. He's not the brightest guy in the world, just a nice, friendly kid. You like him. Well, what kind of a jam is uh, our boy in? Well, I'd rather you got the story straight from George. The fact that he can tell it with a straight face is the main reason I believe him. It's one for the books, Blackie. Why do you stay here? Hello, Mr. Markham. Hello, Any George. luck in getting the bail reduced? I'm afraid not, George. But I brought along a friend who's going to help us. Blackie, this is George Grenoble. Boston Blackie. Hello, George. Hey, I've heard plenty about you. I guess if anybody can find that brunette, you can. Jim, you didn't tell me there was a woman mixed up in this. In front of Mary? <laughs> I'll go out and keep her company. George, you tell Blackie the whole story, just as you told it to me. I'll come back in 15 minutes. Okay, Mr. Markham. George, let's have it. Well, I guess it was my car that hit the milkman, all right. But I slept through it all. Well, who was driving? Well, this brunette. Oh. What's her name? Where can we get in touch with her? All I know is that she was a brunette and wore a fancy dress. How did you meet her? You remember that much, don't you? Oh, sure. You see, I've been up in Santa Barbara. A friend of mine got married, and... Coming back, I got pretty sleepy, so I pulled into this cafe for some coffee. While I was drinking it, this brunette came over and asked for a lift into Hollywood. Look, isn't there some little thing you can remember about her? What she looked like? Well, she was scared. Scared? Of what? I don't know. I guess all I remember is that sequin gown. You see, I'm a window dresser in a department store, and I sort of notice women's clothes. I never saw a dress like that before, except maybe at a masquerade. Kind of a gay 90s thing. Sixman gone. George, you got an idea. It's one in a million, but it might just work. Officer! Lawyer Markham was a darn good cop, Blackie. You know this won't work. Maybe not. It'll give Mary a chance to do some window shopping. Here, it, it should flare out differently. And the neckline isn't right. That's it. That's the dress. 
Good work. I guess it'd be expected. It's a very exclusive model. Something for one of the leading designers. Why don't you come clean, George, and admit that you imagined this thing? She doesn't exist. George, on the advice of counsel... Oh, don't worry, Jim. If she does exist, Blackie will find her for you. You can depend on that. Oh, come on, Mary. We've got work to do. Do not walk. Flow and leave your bones somewhere else. When you model one of my creations, you're not supposed to have any bones. People come here to see my gowns, not your skeleton in action. Now try it again. Mr. Severy, I, I presume? Nonsense, I am Severy. That is sufficient. Well, have it your own way. I'm looking for the uh, person who designed this dress. I showed it to one of your competitors. Severy has no competitors. Well, this non-competitor of yours said that you are the only one who could have designed it. The signature of a great artist is in his work. Where did you get this? Who sketched it for you? Well, it was sort of sketched from memory. Who did you sell it to? The gown was designed for use in a cinema. I don't remember the name. The period picture, right? Now, could you remember the name of the studio? Arcadia Pictures. Now get out. Out! Out! Mary, you heard the man. Flow out of here. About a year ago, it was in the papers. Her husband committed suicide. Yeah, I think I do. Still want to talk to her. <laughs> Miss Collins? Yes, what is it? I just talked to your wardrobe woman. She says you wore a dress like this earlier in the picture. Yes, for the dance hall sequence. Is it so important? It is to George Grenoble. George who? Well, maybe he was too sleepy to introduce himself. But you remember? The chump you left to take the rap for you after you ran over the milkman. Do you know what he's talking about? In case you didn't read the newspapers, the milkman died. So it's not only hit and run, it's manslaughter. But let me see if I have this straight. I'm supposed to have run over a milkman while driving someone else's car. Oh, where and when did all this happen? Three nights ago in Encino. How fantastic can you get? I haven't been in Encino for years. Three nights ago. I worked late that night. I didn't leave the studio till after 11 o'clock. Well, that's something that can easily be checked. Of course it can. Royce, come here. Anything wrong? This is my manager. Tell this gentleman where I was last Monday night. Monday? That's the night you worked late at the studio. Remember, they shot all your night scenes. I drove you home about midnight, remember? Satisfied? Or would you like to hear the same thing from the director and the cameraman and the rest of the crew? Well, it isn't likely you could buy them all off. Colin, on the set, please. Coming. You must be a lawyer. Someone trying to get some cheap publicity. Oh, don't try to get it at my expense. I can give you more than you can handle. Colin, please. I'm coming. Find out how these two got a pass on the lot. And do something about it. All right, Miss Collins, I was offside. If I dressed with the wrong girl, very sorry. Come on, Mary, let's silently steal away. Go over to wardrobe at once. Get the sequin dress. You know the one. All right, what'll I do with it? Take it home. Burn it. Destroy it. Do anything. Just be sure no one ever sees the dress again. Particularly that nosy character who just left. Do you think she was lying? Ah. I can't see her using an alibi like that, unless it would stand up. Must have been some other brunette. If somebody else took the dress out, wouldn't the wardrobe department have a record of it? It's 
smart girl. Let's have a look. What's the matter? I wonder what's in that box. Well, from the looks of it, probably a dress. Hey, maybe it's that dress. Yeah. I wonder why Carolyn's iron boy is hustling it out of here. Well, we could ask him. What? Oh, it's... Well, what do you want? I want to settle a little bet. My girl's a compulsive gambler. She says that box contains a man's shirt. Size 16 collar. I'm sorry, I gotta hurry. Now, I say it's a lady's dress. Why don't you be a good guy and let us take it's a look? It's none of your business. And let go of my arm. What difference would it make? Hey. It was important enough for him to risk his neck. Exciting? You bet, but that's only the beginning. And we'll return in just a moment for part two of our Boston Blackie adventure. Blackie, why the formality? Faraday, I want you to do me a favor. Oh, I can't. No, I'm too busy. But I found that dress. Did it have a brunette in it? Oh, no, but... Uh... Well, stop looking. I've got her. You found her? No. She came in voluntarily. Well, surprise, surprise. On me. All right, Miss Collins. Now, what happened next? Well, as I said, he was asleep, and he kept falling over on my shoulders and interfering with my driving. I felt a slight jar just as I was trying to shove him away. I have no doubt. That's when I hit that poor man. I didn't see anything at any time. In fact, I thought I'd just hit a traffic button. It wasn't until I heard that George Grenoble was in jail that I realized I was to blame. It was very nice of you to come in. A lot of others wouldn't have. Come in. Congratulations, Blackie. Great work. Not me. I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> well, I want to know if this clears my client of any responsibility. Miss Collins has admitted that she drove the car. Good. Then there's no reason why Grenoble can't be released. All right. Congratulations, George. You're a free man. She isn't the one. What? But what is this? What? That isn't the right woman. But you said you didn't know what she looked like. Well, I don't. But I do remember what she didn't look like. She didn't look like this woman. Not really. What's going on here? I want to find out, and nobody's going to leave this room until I do. If I live to be a million, I'll never understand it. There was George out of jail, as free as a bird, and he had to open his big, fat mouth. Did Faraday hold Caroline? No. No, he checked on that story she gave us at the studio. And he found out that she did work late that night. Then he accused her of turning herself in for publicity. That gave her an out. But why did you confess, Jim? I don't understand. Maybe it's a hobby with her. Or maybe she's protecting someone. Did she strike you as a sacrificing type? You know, if Grenoble had kept his mouth shut, 
she'd be up on a manslaughter charge. And that's carrying protection a little too far. But why, Blackie? I don't know. Well, maybe she thought it would do her some good. Mary, where's that dress? In the other room. Will you get it? Mm-hmm. What about this Collins gal, Blackie? Anything in the files on her? Faraday said she had a husband turn up dead about a year ago. Mm -hmm. Hung himself in a clothes closet. Here it is. Exhibit A. Very pretty, but without the right gal in it, isn't much use. Right. Why did Carolyn try so hard to keep us from getting this gal? Why? Yes, it's quite stunning. Boston Blackie has a sequin dress. He didn't turn it over to the police. Then he knows. I doubt it. Won't make any difference as long as we can get it back. I created the gown especially for Madame's figure. No one else in town could wear it. If we can get it back. My love has a delightful sense of humor. May I assume, darling, that you've already decided how we should go about this? After that latest brainwave of yours, darling. Isn't this sarcasm a little misplaced? Confessing to the hit and run charge was the tactics of a genius. How was I to know that Grenoble was an idiot? How could you know that girl Miracle Johnson would walk in the day we killed Tony? No, it was never my idea of a solution to our situation with Tony. Remember, you were the insistent one. You couldn't divorce him and... Well, it's the only way out now. We'll never get that dress back as long as Blackie is alive. Are you suggesting yes, I... Yes, I am suggesting. If, uh, if Madame would step into the fitting room, please. Thank you. This is getting us nowhere. Mary, what do you see about this dress that a man doesn't? Well, the sequins are a little out of line on the bodice. <laughs> so the sequins are out of line. Maybe the sewing girl was cross-eyed. Uh-uh, not on a savory model. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. This little spangle has been moved deliberately, and it's been mended. Mm -hmm. Look. Let me see. Oh, it looks like a cigarette burn. Yeah. You want to bet it isn't a bullet hole? We'll get Faraday to run a test on that, right? I'll bet this girl we're looking for is more dead than scared. And that's why Caroline didn't want us to see the dress. Wonder who was wearing it? Well, obviously, someone who had the opportunity to get into the lady's wardrobe and sneak it out. The big problem is to find that person. Hello? Yes, he's here. Just a minute, please. For you, Blackie. Thanks, Mary. Hello? This is Severy. It's about the dress. This morning I was very angry and, well, I'm not angry anymore. I wish you to know everything. Will you come to my home? Why can't you tell me now? It's not to tell you, my friend. It's to show you. Show me what? A grave. A lonely hidden grave in the mountains. Please come at once. Hillside Road in Encino. Seven five one two one. Thank you. I'm harsh and cruel. Before my little ones learn how to flow instead of lunge, they hate me. Then I give a party for them and they love me. It was at my costume party I saw the sequin gown again. Who was wearing it? Miracle Johnson. <laughs> Ludicrous but effective. I myself gave her the name. Was she one of your models? Once. Not any longer. She became a, an actress with Arcadia Pictures. So she sneaked into the wardrobe and uh, got this gown. Wore it to your party. What happened to her? She's dead. Killed with a gun down the road there. I heard the noise and I saw the flash. It was dark, you understand. So of course I could see no more. And you didn't report this? It was terrible. I banish unpleasant things from my mind. Oh, sure, I understand. You're the artistic type. This will come as a blow, but you're in trouble. We better get the police out here so you can show them Miracle's grave. Oh, but no, I couldn't. Perhaps the body has been moved. Then I'd be a suspect. That's why I asked you to come here. An unimpeachable witness. Come, I'll show you. After you. Is this sure a lot? 
lonesome spot. A couple of more rains and the body might never have been found. How'd you know where to look? I followed. And from a distance, I watched them in the moonlight as they buried my little one. You keep saying they. How many were there? Two. Man and a woman? Yes. I need a cigarette. Hand me my coat. You know something? What? Murder becomes more complicated all the time. Just killing someone isn't enough. Nowadays, you have to hide the body, too. It takes muscle to be a grave digger. It's a matter of necessity. And if one is sufficiently desperate, he'll find the strength. I suppose the more experience a murderer has, the more practical he gets. For instance, a real smart killer could get his victim to dig his own grave. Okay, chum, now it's your turn to dig. While you're at it, you can level with me about Miracle Johnson. I want that hit and run driver. You can have her, but I don't think you'll want her. She's dead. Who's dead? Her name is Miracle Johnson, Inspector. She took small parts in here at the studio. She was blackmailing Carolyn Collins and Severy, the dress designer. They killed her. Well, I hope you can back this up with some evidence. Well, listen to this, Paraday. The night of the hit-and-run accident, Miracle went to a party at Severy's place. Now, he was supposed to dispose of her then, but somehow she got away. Hitched a ride back to town with George Grenoble. Mm -hmm. No wonder she was a scared brunette. Now, when she got back to town... Now, Quiet, wait, folks, please. This is a take. Now, when she got back to town, Carolyn was waiting for her. Severy had already phoned in ahead. Carolyn shot her right through that sequin dress. No. Why didn't they bury the dress, too? Well, because it had to be back here at the studio for the next day's shooting. Oh, I see. So Caroline cleaned off the blood and, and then moved the sequins to cover the bullet hole. Right. Severy took the body, buried it up in the mountain. What Blackie tells me, Severy was going to plant him right in that hey, same but... grave with Miracle. Okay, folks, you can go on now, but after this, watch your red light. Well, this starts to add up. That suicide, Caroline's husband. I'll bet that really was a murder. You're so right, Inspector. And Little Miracle stumbled in on Carolyn and Severy just when they were in the act of hanging the old boy up in the closet. Well, why do we stand here yakking? I'm going to arrest that woman. be a big gunfight. Carolyn's up there on the balcony. She sees the heavies closing in on the boyfriend. As they start to shoot, she opens up on them. You got it? All right, now let's shoot it. Okay? Action! Drop that gun, Miss Collins. This is a rough way of doing it, Jim, but I think it'll clear your client. Thanks, Blackie. But the next time, just dig up the evidence. Let me handle the rest in court. I need the experience. Okay, son, here's your chance to become a big-time lawyer. Come on. She packs a better wallop than you do. 